How's the weather today, Mike? Uh, Dan, it's uh, it, it has changed a couple of times. Actually, the windiest. I think this is the worst it's going to be all week. So the guys who are out there right now, Rory McIlroy, Jordan Spieth, Jason Day, I think they're going to have the toughest time. And uh, be the guys who get the wrong end of the draw. So advantage for Mickelson and the guys who played late yesterday, early today. Mickelson, it, it's interesting that he was disappointed with his 63. If I would have said, opening round, Phil, would you sign up for a 63? He'd be like, yeah. But the fact that he missed out yeah. on, on the record, he said he was disappointed. He said he was ready to shed a tear? Yeah, he did. He did. I, I kind of equated it to you know Mickelson's career. It's been great and heartbreaking when you look back at it. And for him, that's what yesterday was. That was a great round because it, it equals the best round in the major. It's happened 28 times. 26 guys have done it. So that's all great. But – he wanted the record, and it's been, and the way it happened too. The putt was dead center; it was going in. I still think there was something that hit right in front of the hole, it just veered slightly to the right. Uh, you know, that that was a, a record I think he really wanted because he's won his majors, five of them. He's never been number one in the world. He's never been uh, a player who's got other accolades like Player of the Year. So to have that record for him would have been cool. And at this point. It's kind of the thing, thing you're playing for. You're playing for history. He's certainly not playing for the money at this point. But at age 46, doing what he's doing, um, is there, are there parallels here at all with Na- Nicholas uh, at 46 when he won Augusta? In, in, some, in some ways, those age parallels are there because of the number of players who haven't won uh, that late in their lives at, at majors. But I think guys are in much better shape. I think it's a different time. You know, VJ Singh's still out here and still playing. He's in his early 50s. Miguel Angel Jimenez still uh, plays well enough to make the cut in a major. And, and Mickelson has managed his schedule. We know his arthritis thing that he's dealt with. But he, he's found ways to continue to compete. So I think that plus the technology, athletes' careers are lasting longer and better if they don't break down and get injuries. And he's been able to avoid the serious ones. So it, it makes some sense. And it kind of, it, it makes you think about Tiger. You know, if, if his body wasn't breaking down the way it was, you'd still be expecting him at 40, you know, soon to be 41, still be expecting him to be at that high level. So these guys can hang around longer, I think, because of the way it's happening with diet, workout, trainers, massage, ice baths, you know, stuff, stuff that wasn't there when you, we're playing of course what do you think tiger is thinking yeah. as he watches the open uh i think everyone that goes by in his mind somewhere is wondering if he if he can ever get back to doing it again at the, at that level uh you know the the mind is certainly there you know i would think of the majors that he doesn't play in that it burns him the most i think it might be this one and augusta because i think those are the two that you need the most guile and experience to pull off. And I think because he has so much experience at these golf courses in the open, and you don't have to hit it 335 yards. You don't have to bomb it over everything. And if you're wayward, okay, you don't have to hit driver every time. You can hit three woods. And he hit famously uh, very few drivers, a lot of irons in the right wind conditions, and you could still have a game plan that you can shoot 70, 69 all four days. So I, I would say this and the local knowledge at Augusta, which comes with playing so many masters, are the two where he thinks somewhere in his mind, man, if I can get back and stay healthy to work on my swing, build on something, those are the places I could I could win a major again. Do I think he will? Probably not. But I think those are the places. He's Mike Tirico of NBC Sports at the Open Championship at uh, Troon in Scotland. How many times have you said or come close to saying, ESPN. You know, that's a, it's always a good friend who puts a thought in your mind. I appreciate that. That's kind. <laughs> <laughs> not at all. Not, actually, not at all. Not, not at all. I've, I've been pretty good so far. I, I've, I've only done Golf Channel the first couple of days here, so it'll that that has that hasn't been a problem. I don't I don't think it'll be a problem. I, well, they've given me enough shirts with peacocks on it to make sure that I don't screw it up. I actually gave the uh, the number for ESPN one time on this show a couple oh, the of phone times. Number yeah, on the show? <laughs> yes, yes, yeah. And I'm going, what am I doing? I, but I, I did see that happen. I 
Uh, here's what here's what happens. If if I do it, you're going to buy me dinner. Only this weekend. No, 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 no. You're when you go to the to, oh, Mike, when you go to Rio, I. You know, I, yes. I'm not putting it in your head in Rio unless I see you before, you know, we like opening ceremonies. <laughs> but but I put it into your head here and I'll buy you dinner. Okay. Yeah. Fair, fair. This this week alone, if for some reason I blame you and you buy me di- you buy me dinner in Rio. Do you change your tone if we if you were doing a football game or you're doing golf? Mm-hmm. The difference in inflection with excitement Timing is it yeah, sure. are, are similar? Or do you, are you are you a, a a different announcer? Here's here's where I came across how to handle this. I remember doing the first football game that I I did, and that first full weekend after nine eleven, and I was really concerned. Like, how do you approach this? How do you react when a team scores? And I, I, the game I happened to do was in Ann Arbor, where I live. And I said, well, if 110,000 people are cheering the way they used to cheer before this happened, I'll just do what they do. I'll, I'll react accordingly. If it's a muted applause and it feels a little bit different, then I'll try to match that. And I try to adopt, adopt that philosophy. When you go to an NBA game, do golf, just match what the environment is. And you sound like a fool if you're screaming <laughs> you would at an NBA game while calling golf. And if you're speaking in slow, silent, quiet whispers while an NBA game's going on, then nobody's going to hear you, which might be better for everyone. But I just try to match the environment and hope that it works out in a proper way. Wouldn't you like to have Gruden as your sidekick doing a, a golf event? <laughs> no, see, I, I, I thought those would be the good announcer swaps. When I, when I was at ESPN, we did the college basketball guys working with NBA guys. I thought the good announcer swaps would be like have Gruden do an NBA game, get Hubie Brown to do a Monday night football game. Okay, so what we have here is third down, all right? <laughs> third and five. And what we need here is to get it to the painted area and get the first down. I, I, that would be different. That would be something people would remember. Well, if you got Gruden, he'd be like, this guy, this guy. He wouldn't know anybody. He would just say, this guy. I love this no, guy. No, he would. He, he, you know what, John? John is a big NBA fan. John loves the Celtics. Loves the Celtics. I'd like to have him as a golf announcer, Mike. Who? Oh, Gruden. Yeah. He, he's a he's a golf he's a golf watcher too. He, you'd be sorry, you'd be surprised. He's actually a really a really big sports fan. So, this so guy. Many of these guys are now. You know that. This guy. You come, you come across people. But that would be fun. I know. He, you know what? He doesn't say that nearly as much as people. <laughs> claim he does i bet if you listen you wouldn't hear him say that more than once in a football game blame caliendo well of course <laughs> caliendo was great caliendo did he didn't like me because he couldn't get an invitation of me down and it kind of hurt his whole gig but what i think is great when caliendo can go from like berman to stephen a smith to gruden all to ditka all in one fell swoop yep. that's hard to that's hard to do he is He's very fun. I, I've seen him live. His show is terrific. He didn't like. He said he couldn't get my voice down either. No, well, you know, I always wonder what I have in common with you, and if it's not the hair, <laughs> so perhaps that's it. And, and now we work in the same place. He's uh, Mike Trico, no longer with ESPN. He now works for NBC Sports. Good luck. I hope that's in your head throughout the weekend, Mike. I, I'm, I'm glad to Thank make you. an impression Thank on you. Thank you. Um, and then I'll see you in a if couple not, of weeks. It will be my pleasure. Yeah, if not, it's my pleasure to buy you dinner in Rio. Yes. About time. Thank you, All Mike. Right, Kyle. Thanks. Right. Have a good weekend. That's Mike Tirico of NBC Sports. The Dan Patrick Show, weekday mornings on Audience.